Hi, I'm going to teach you how to determine the rate law just by looking at it, by doing math in your head. Um, now, if you haven't watched the um, how to determine the rate law by mathematical means video, please watch that video because it lays a really good foundation. Uh, some of you though, you don't need to do all the math. You can just look at it and you can figure it out in your head. Um, now, here's my word of warning. When you get the final rate law, you still have to justify it. If you're doing an AP test, if you're doing a college test, a high school test, you can't just write down the rate law because your professor, your teacher will think that you guessed on the orders. You have to justify it. So even though you could do it in your head, and I'm so proud of you, you still got to write some work or some words to justify how you came up with that rate law. So I'll help you with that. Okay, so here is our task. We need to find the rate law for this um, methyl acetate hydroxide reaction. You know that the rate totally depends on the reactants. So we can write down as much as possible of what we do know for this rate law. It'll be rate equals the rate constant times concentration of methyl acetate raised to the order of M times the concentration of hydroxide raised to the order of N. Our task is to find M and N. Now we are given experimental data. We have to determine those um, orders experimentally. So what you do if you want to do mental math to figure this out, you pick two trials in which um, one of the concentrations is the same number, so it can cancel out, okay? Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at trials one and two. I can tell that the chemist, great job, they're setting this up for us. They're holding the concentration of the methyl acetate constant, okay? So that's constant. But what did they do to the hydroxide concentration? They doubled it. So if you look at the rate, oh, check it out. It went from 0.0034 to 0.00069. It doubled. So if when you double hydroxide, it doubles the reaction, it means that the hydroxide must be an order of one. It must be first order. Now, here's how you could justify this. You could, even for the hydroxide, you could say for the hydroxide, that is two equals the rate of two to the N, right there. For me, that's enough if my students can show me that, that this doubled and this doubles, therefore N must be first order, I will give it to them. Um, if they wrote it in a sentence, if they said, when methyl acetate is held constant and hydro the concentration of hydroxide is doubled, the rate doubles, N must be first order. I will give that to them. I um, can see that they understand the principle that if you double this um, concentration, it doubles the rate, it has to be first order. Um, I like putting down the math. I think it's easier to write than writing words, but if you love words, write the words. Um, okay, so there's the first one. Now we've got to find M. I've got to find the order of M. So I'm trying to find what's been held constant on the hydroxide. Well, I see it. There it is. It's going to be my um, 0.1 and 0.1 on experiments two and three. So when hydroxide is held constant, let's see what the chemists did. They had a concentration for methyl acetate 0.05. They doubled it to 0.1. Let's see what happened to the rate. So this rate went from 0.00069 to 0.000137. That also doubled. So that means if this doubled, if my, I'll put it down here, my methyl acetate doubled, if the methyl acetate doubled and my concentration doubled, then M must also be a first order. Now, what if it was a second order? What would that look like? Think about that for just a second. If I doubled this and it was a second order, okay, second order, what would have to happen to this? it would have to increase by a factor of four. It would come out to be pretty close to what, 0 0.00276, something like that, to be really close. It would, the numbers would look like this. If you double this, you quadruple the rate, which means M would have to be a second order. Um, so if something is doubled and then you quadruple the rate, it means it's a second order. This one though, we doubled, and the rate doubled, so it has to be a first order reaction. Now, what I've written down there, that's enough that I will, get cre I will give credit to my students. I can see that they understand the principle of doubling concentration, doubling the rate. Or if they wrote out words, um, when hydroxide is held constant, 
the concentration of methyl acetate is double. Uh, therefore, the initial rate of, um, of the reaction doubles and must be first order. I will give them credit for that as well. Okay, so over here, I can go ahead and change my M and N to a first order and a first order. So there's looking at the overall rate law by inspection. Given your data, you're asking yourself, if I double, um, if I triple, if I quadruple concentrations, um, rates, how do those interplay? So what does the exponent have to be? What's the order? Okay, nice job. Now, several outflows of this. Again, watch the mathematical video. You need to know how to calculate K. So watch the video on calculating the value and unit of K. Um, lastly, you will be given some new conditions and you have to determine a new rate. Watch that video as well. And then you'll be comprehensive on taking data and working with the rate law. Good work. So proud of you. Have a good day.